Good morning and greetings to everyone who will be part of this service. You are all welcome. We know that many people still can't safely come to live worship in church, so we plan to keep recording our Sunday service and making it available online. The easy bit is filming and editing, but the part of the process that can take a long time is uploading it onto the web. Please bear with us if you have a longer wait to view the service online than you expect, as none of us can control how fast electronic processes will work. We are all learning new skills as we go along, and it's good to know that people are waiting to share our services in this way. Our worship today is led by our minister, Kirsty Thorpe. Let us join together in a moment of silence as we start to worship. Our call to worship is taken from today's psalm, number 67. God, be merciful to us and bless us. Look on us with kindness, so that the whole world may know your will, so that all nations may know your salvation. May the people praise you, O God, May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy because you judge the peoples with justice and guide every nation on earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. The land has produced its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us. May all people everywhere honour him. Our first hymn calls on disciples of Jesus to see where God is at work around us so we can join in and help. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets.
Let us pray. Father God, we come before you with love in our hearts and words of praise on our lips. You spoke and the world came into being. You give each one of your children unique and special gifts to offer alongside the needs and frailties we also carry. And you have given us the gift of this new day. Jesus Christ, Son of God, we come to you with love in our hearts and a smile on our faces. You call us and we follow. You invite us to join you and we take your hand, going on a journey that restarts each day, discovering places we would never find alone, and making new friends in your company. Holy Spirit, challenge and comforter, we meet you with love in our hearts and openness in our minds. You upset our complacency and comfort our fears, moving within and between us in ways we cannot predict, control or explain, reminding us of God's presence. God of forgiveness, Help us to turn around our lives. For we know we are part of a world where many people have turned their backs upon you, have rejected the needs of those around them, and refuse to see further than their own fingertips. We confess our own slowness to apologise, our desire to have things all our own way, the speed and skill with which we diagnose one another's faults, and our blindness about our own behaviour. We confess the damage the church does in your name our dividedness, rivalries and petty squabbles, our lack of appreciation for other ways of seeing and doing things, the way we undermine one another's faith, our failure to value and respect each other. Help us, loving God, to accept ourselves and one another and to feel your forgiveness, bringing about transformation and change within our hearts and minds. Thanks to God for his love and forgiveness brought to us in Jesus Christ. We celebrate this as we say the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen this week's passage from matthew's gospel is found at chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. And this is the Revised English Bible version. 
Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from those parts came to meet him, crying, Son of David, have pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he said not a word in reply. His disciples came and urged him, Send her away. See how she comes shouting after us. Jesus replied, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to them alone. But the woman came and fell at his feet and cried, Help me, sir. Jesus replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. True, sir, she answered. And yet the dogs eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Hearing this, Jesus replied, What faith you have, let it be as you wish. And from that moment, her daughter was restored to health. Today's Gospel reading finds Jesus up north outside his home region of Galilee, still caught between the needs of the people who come to him for help and his focus on what God wants from him. He's just deeply offended a group of Pharisees sent to Galilee on a fact-finding mission from the temple in Jerusalem. Not a good career move. He's criticised those who keep Jewish purity laws but don't tackle their own unclean thoughts and actions. Now he and his disciples are in Gentile territory. The last place Jesus might expect to be recognised and asked for help. But he's wrong. Up comes a Canaanite woman in search of help for her daughter's mental health, who puts him right on the spot by what she says. Son of David is the title Matthew's Gospel gives Jesus right at the start, before listing all his ancestors, including three Canaanite women, Rahab, Tamar and Ruth. The woman asks for pity because she's heard that the teacher helps people in distress. The disciples still haven't worked out who their rabbi really is. But here's a foreign woman who knows exactly what he can do, driven by a mother's primal energy to claim what her child needs. So here is Jesus being put on the spot by a Gentile woman as she enters into a debate with him about who should benefit from the good news he brings. Is it for the house of Israel alone or is Jesus a Messiah for the whole world? If we cast a quick eye over the possible answers to that question which Matthew's Gospel has given us so far, we will find mixed messages. We've seen Jesus send out the disciples on their first rural mission with directions to leave the Samaritan villages alone and head only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. On the other hand, in the parable of the sower and an account of mass feeding with baskets of leftovers, We've already seen God providing more than enough for everyone through the ministry of Jesus. This woman seems to have sensed God's rich generosity already. And she is here in person to claim some crumbs of leftover healing to feed her child. It sounds offensive even to us when Jesus uses the everyday language of Jewish society to imply that Gentiles like hers, like her, 
are dogs. Is he doing this deliberately to shock the disciples perhaps? They are used to hearing and seeing him include people who they would normally reject. So hearing such objectionable words on his lips would certainly make them take notice. Whatever ha is happening, the woman herself is more than equal to this dialogue. It's almost as if she'd been there in the crowd earlier on when Jesus told the Pharisees that being unclean, the way Jews would label her as unclean as a Gentile, is not about what you eat, but about what starts in your heart and comes out in your words and actions. She is a model of persistence and quick thinking. This is not one of those occasions when you think of exactly what you wanted to say, but unfortunately it's ten hours later. Where does her confidence come from? Apart from her desperation to see her child well. Well, perhaps it's the benefit of this conversation happening on her home soil not that of Jesus. Home advantage can often help an underdog team to play better. Huh, there's that word again. It's also worth noting that at the time it was probably quite common for Gentile households to keep dogs who will be fed from under the table. But not at all likely that Jewish households would have a dog. The speed with which Jesus welcomes the woman's quick and witty response suggests to me that she's saying just what he's been hoping to hear. What faith you have. That's not a phrase we've heard him use to the disciples very often yet. Let it be as you wish is an affirmation of her courage and that God's reality now matches up to her hopes for her daughter's future well-being. I love the fact that this story is in Matthew's Gospel because it challenges all the times I fail to see my own biases, the blinkers I wear about all sorts of differences, cultural, ethnic, political, economic, religious ones, I love the way the woman's persistence and clear speaking give Jesus a moment in which to match his behaviour and his words. In the next chapter of Matthew's Gospel, he will give the disciples a new understanding of what a Messiah looks like, and this story sets the scene. It also sets me thinking about other persistent women who have taught people something about the extent of God's love and the need for justice and wholeness in our world. Here are just two examples that have come to mind for me. First, a 15-year-old weaver's daughter from Wales who went on a walk 220 years ago. She set out over the mountains barefoot and walked 25 miles. Some of us here in church are walking to raise money this month. But none of us is working, walking in those conditions. When she got to Bala, Mary Jones must have been shattered. The three shillings and six pence she had taken nearly six years to save up would not buy her the Bible she wanted because they had sold out. Legend has it that Thomas Charles, the minister concerned, arranged lodgings for her for a couple of nights until a new supply of Bibles arrived and then sold her three copies for the price of one. On the basis of this one girl's persistence, the Bible Society was born. My second persistent woman is Barbara Blake Hanna, a Jamaican journalist who arrived in Britain in the 1960s worked on newspapers and television. She was dismissed from her first television job after nine months with no explanation, although her producer said there was negative response from the viewers 
to a black woman on television. She then worked for a television company in Birmingham, where she found it impossible to find a hotel bed overnight and had to commute from London each day until she found accommodation in the YWCA. She was kept away from the studio when Enoch Powell was interviewed. She then became a researcher for the BBC, went back to Jamaica in the 1970s, has had a very successful career there as a journalist and cultural consultant. And this week, an award was begun in her name for emerging young minority ethnic journalists in this country. God loves us to grow. And we do so when we go beyond our comfort zones, Jesus included. Let us pray. God of faithfulness and hope, we pray for those people around our world who are modeling persistence and faith for us now. Faith in the future faith in the importance of democracy, faith beyond disaster. We particularly remember the people of Belarus this morning, out on the streets, hoping to overthrow a long-standing and oppressive rule, unarmed in the face of soldiers and riot police. We pray for the people of Lebanon, no longer top of our headlines, but still devastated by the effects of an explosion which has rocked not just the city of Beirut, but the whole political and society structure of the nation. And we pray for all the different discussions and debates that will focus in the coming weeks and months around the United States presidential campaign. That debate there may be peaceful, respectful, and ultimately bring about a result that all can agree with and accept. We pray for schools and pupils receiving exam results, returning to their studies, and for those teachers and administrators whose plans and policies 
for safe return will be tested in the coming days. We pray for those people whose mental health is under stress at this time. And we remember all those grieving the loss of loved ones. Help us, loving God, to receive strength from you. Hold us within your loving embrace. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us how God's plan for healing and wholeness in the world is made flesh in Jesus. David Fox's hymn, God with Humanity Made One. go from this place of worship in the strength of God the Father, in the company of Jesus the Son, and in the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit. Amen.